I'm a LEGO animator and we all love satisfying animations, so in this video I'm animating the most satisfying LEGO animations I have made so far. This time I'm crushing and cutting LEGO and also making simple LEGO fidget toys functional using stop motion. Let's begin animating. I recently saw these videos of glass bottles rolling downstairs. The sound the bottles made was really satisfying and the end result of them breaking is just perfect. So I thought, why not try to recreate that with LEGO. I've got these LEGO glass bottles and to demonstrate how the animation of the glass breaking will look like, I animated the minifigure attempting a bottle flip and failing the bottle flip. For the glass shards, I'll simply use these smaller transparent LEGO pieces with matching colors. Okay, now for the glass rolling down the stairs. I got a bunch of these different bottle pieces, like this LEGO potion. I then built the stairs using these 2x4 tiles for a smooth surface the bowls can roll on. With the stairs done and my LEGO bottles ready, it was time to animate. Each bottle took about 20 minutes to animate and with 7 bottles it adds up quickly. I really like how the finished animation turned out. Now that's oddly satisfying. And since I really liked animating glass breaking, I also animated the minifigure running through a glass window. And this glass panel wobbling around before hitting the ground and shattering all over the base plate. I don't know why, but I just love animating stuff breaking. And speaking of stuff breaking, it's time to crush some LEGO. Using my hand and stop motion, I can squash LEGO stuff by replacing the object with flat tiles. Starting off with this LEGO minifigure. I made this thing for the frame between the normal sized figure and the flat squashed remains. I animated it and here's what the minifigure looked like after getting squashed. I then wanted to squash a car, kinda like how they crush old cars at junkyards. I got this tiny LEGO smart car and I pre-made the flattened car so that I could easily switch out the LEGO car with it in the animation. And it ended up looking like one of those bear rugs if the bear was a panda or something. I then animated the squashing of the car. All of this kinda reminds me of squashing a bug, so I got this LEGO fly. Now, let's squash it. I used these transparent green and yellow pieces for the insect goo. Looks gross, but that's exactly how I wanted it to look, which is great. Anyway, this last animation turned out really good. I have the perfect place to find inspiration for my next animation, mobile games. They are made to be satisfying so that the player never wants to quit playing it, generating the game companies a bunch of money through ads. These games have basically perfected the formula of satisfaction. And the one I'm gonna turn into LEGO is the stacking game where the challenge is to stack tiles on top of each other as high as possible, but even the slightest misplacement results in the edges being cut off, causing the tiles to shrink. Everything about the game is satisfying, except the ads. Time to make the animation. I began by building the tile modules for the stacking. These LEGO tiles will be animated appearing and gracefully being placed atop the growing tower. And just like in the mobile game, any overlap that extends beyond the tower's edge will be cut out, gradually reducing the size of the tiles until you simply miss the placement and lose. To create the illusion of floating LEGO tiles as they're being placed on the tower, I had them stacked on top of these bricks. But now we have these ugly support towers beneath the tiles, so I have to remove those. And I do that by using a blank image with only the stacked tiles, no support tower or tiles. And then mask out a portion of the blank image to place over the support tower. And then there are some shadows and quirks I have to take care of as well. This creates a seamless floating effect. And after several hours of rig removal, the animation was done. Also quick shout out to Kelloft who inspired me to make this. Here's the finished animation. Alright, moving on. These popping toys have been popping up all over the world lately and in all kinds of shapes. They're called puppets and they're fidget toys where you very satisfyingly pop these bubbles. So I guess I'll have to try to make something like that out of LEGO. So here's my plan to make the puppet animation with LEGO. Step 1, build the LEGO puppet. Step 2, animate it. Step 3, enjoy the satisfying animation I just created. So, first of all, I need to build a LEGO puppet. For the bubbles, I'll be using these rounded dome bricks. For the color scheme, I'll try to make it colorful as the puppets usually have all kinds of colors. I then put it all together and voila! Now, I obviously can't just press down on these since they're solid bricks. I have to use the magic of animation once again. Here's how the animation is gonna work. I have my finger and while taking pictures, I'll place it on top of the dome piece and in the next frame, I'll replace the dome piece with a round 2x2 tile to make it look like it got pressed. Here's an example I made with this tiny red button. Now I could begin animating the real deal. I had to hold my hand really still during the animation process or else there would be a lot of motion blur in the finished creation. I popped all the bubbles and added some fun sound effects to the animation. And you've waited long enough, so here you have it.
I also made this satisfying wave animation of the bubbles going up and down. I used to pull on those old car antennas when I was young. I would then release it, flinging it in a mesmerizing motion. Thanks to the public studs for filming by the way. I wanna try to see if I can animate something like that with LEGO and hopefully make it look satisfying. I have these LEGO antenna pieces you can put on cars to make them more detailed. So I animated my finger flinging it like the real antenna. It looks cool, but we aren't getting that flexible look the real antenna has, so I have to do it with a bigger LEGO antenna. I got some of these black cylindrical pieces so that I could build a bigger version of the antenna. And to top it off, I added this rounded piece. But trying to animate this bending results in it falling apart immediately. Luckily, there's a solution. LEGO has made these bendy tubes that fit perfectly inside these pieces. Putting the tube inside the pieces not only makes it stronger, but also very bendy. You can use this building technique to build a palm tree by using brown pieces on the outside to represent the palm tree trunk. Or, like I did, a massively oversized LEGO antenna. Now with this LEGO antenna reinforced, I can begin animating. Very similar to the first one with the tiny antenna, I use my finger to pull on it and then release it, flinging it all over the place. But this time bending like a real antenna. I'd say I did a good recreation of the real antenna flinging. I have previously made an animation where I drew a smiley face with LEGO. I posted the animation as a short and oh wow, people liked it. I think I'm gonna draw something again. Not a smiley face this time, but the one thing pretty much every kid has drawn at least once during their childhood. I'm of course talking about the cool S, Super S, Universal S or whatever else you wanna call it. I think this symbol is the best choice to draw as it's so well known all across the world and it's actually kinda satisfying to draw. You make 6 lines like this and then make triangles on top and bottom and finally connect these lines together to create the cool S. To make a LEGO drawing animation, the camera needs to be as directly above the base plate as possible. And since I don't have any tripod or rig that can get that shot, I tried putting together my own contraption. Sure, I managed to get the camera right above the base plate, but my homemade rig seemed so fragile I was scared it was gonna fall apart at any moment and destroy my camera. So I disassembled it and instead just used my normal tripod at an angle that was close enough to what I wanted. I then began animating the drawing animation, utilizing these one by one black plates for the ink and this custom built LEGO pencil. By the way, it was really time to hold my arm up for the extended period of time it took to animate this animation. I have cut the minifigure horizontally before, but I haven't cut one vertically, so I'm gonna do that next. But I can't really make an animation of cutting this minifigure from top to bottom, since I can't actually cut through the minifigure with this butter knife. For the horizontal cutting animation, I could easily just detach the legs from the body and make it seem like I cut the minifigure that way. Not possible to do that with the vertical one. Unless I got a table saw and cut the figure in half down the middle. And I don't think I should be cutting minifigures with a table saw. So I made this minifigure stunt double for when animating the minifigure getting cut. I made it using bricks and tiles with matching colors to the normal minifigure. It looks kinda weird when you're looking at it, but in the animation it should be less noticeable. With the minifigure and the stunt double ready, I could animate the animation. But before that, I decided to cut some other stuff first. Like this rock, revealing its secret treasures inside when cut. I also cut this UFO which actually turns into two separate fully functional UFOs when cut. I also cut the YouTube logo in half, and then I cut the whole world. Well, maybe not that one. I meant this LEGO globe. Okay, those were quite satisfying, but now it's time to cut the minifigure. You might be thinking, what could the minifigure have done to deserve this treatment? Atrocious crimes is all I have to say. So, time to cut it. I hope you found this animation satisfying, but if you need more satisfaction, I've got two other satisfying animation videos you can check out right now by clicking here. Anyway, thanks for watching and subscribe for more LEGO animations.